Welcome back. Let's be honest. It's been kind of an exhausting week, right? We are getting so much information about the coronavirus, and the outbreak is pretty wide-reaching, impacting the communities in ways we didn't even expect. Superintendent of Public Instruction Kathy Hoffman is joining us in studio today to talk about how the state's Department of Education is responding to this outbreak. Kathy, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure, thank you. All right, we are really at a critical point right now. So many parents are so concerned, including myself as the mother of twins starting kindergarten this year. And, you know, on the one hand, of course we care about our child's safety. Okay, but on the flip side, when these schools are deciding to close each district by district, you know, we worry about childcare. What are we gonna do, especially as full-time working parents? So I know that each district is making the decision to close on their own, but what are you telling these districts? And is this a move that you support of these districts closing on their own? Well, first, let me say this has been a, a very stressful week for school leaders, and I have been in close communication with superintendents and other school leaders around the state, and they are receiving those calls. They are extreme. They are receiving immense pressure from parents to close. Um, yesterday, I held a um, telephone conference for for school leaders. That was I was with Governor Ducey and Dr. Kara Christ, who leads the Department of Health Services, and right now, our, our I am following the lead of. Dr. Christ, as well as Governor Ducey. I, I personally do not hold the authority to close schools, as you mentioned right now. That's why it's that's why we're seeing the school by school decision making, because um, I do not make that I do not have the authority to make that decision. Mm -hmm. um, but the recommendation from the Department of Health Services has been for schools to stay open. Mm -hmm. That's the that's what the doctors and medical experts are saying right now in Arizona because we have had so few cases. And then back to your point about child care. Mm -hmm. So what are what are we gonna do? We have one point one million students in Arizona. So if we if we got to that point of having statewide closures, right. where will these children go? And if we just say, oh, put them in childcare, then you just have them grouped in a different You just entity. move the problem. You're just, exactly, you're moving mm -hmm. the risk to a different place. Um, so this is what districts are grappling with, and our role as a department is to be providing support and guidance as they make these very difficult decisions. And when you close these schools, obviously there's a gap in education. Mm -hmm. They're not learning, so, is there some kind of a plan in place? I mean, because this could go on indefinitely or at least two weeks. I know in California, as they are closing schools down there because of the coronavirus, they're doing some, you know, learning packets, the old school learning packets, or they're doing online um, education there. Is there a plan in place for here in Arizona? So it is, again, district by district, and, and what I'm hearing is that many of our districts are equipped for some online learning options, but not all. Some families don't even have internet access at home, so how would they access that? So there are districts that are more equipped for that, that are sending laptops home, especially for our high school students, but then there's others that just don't have the technology, and this is all happening so fast that preparing things like these packets is a little, could be really challenging for our educators. Mm -hmm. Well, along those lines, we did get a question from one viewer. This is from Jennery in Surprise. She asked, uh, will the AZ merit or AIMS testing be canceled or postponed due to this? So if the kids are not there, they're not learning, they're not preparing for these tests, will they have a chance to then learn, prepare for these tests and take them at a later date? So that's actually exactly one of the things that we've been working on in the department is around state assessments. We have the AZ merit, we have a Zella testing. Um, so as of right now, what we have done is we've communicated with the testing vendors to make sure that they will be flexible around the testing window because typically we only get give schools within a certain number of weeks to complete all this all the testing but we need to be flexible right now we need to make sure that schools can if 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 the students are there that we um, give them more time to take the test however there may be a need in the near future that and we are already talking to the federal government around this that we may need a waiver from the federal government to allow us to um, to have some additional permissions and flexibility around testing because typically the federal government requires that we test 95 percent of our students for that for those federal requirements um, with all these absences right. and school closures, it's gonna be really hard for us to ensure that we have 95% participation. So we are working with the federal government if there is a need for that type of waiver. And speaking of a later date, I'm wondering if these schools are closing indefinitely, mm -hmm. then will that 
push back maybe when they get out of school in late May to make up for the, the loss of class? So we are not recommending makeup days for that exact reason, that that would create such disruption in everyone's life. Yeah. Um, so a lot of the school districts are looking at closing for a week or two week, even indefinitely, as you said. So in what I would recommend and what we're hope so what we have to work with the legislature and the governor on is I would recommend continuing to pay staff during the school closure so that there's not a disruption to their pay and then that we don't require the makeup days at the end of the school year but that will actually have to be work out, worked out with the legislature because currently in state law there is a requirement that students uh, that there is 180 days per school year so that's another area where we need more flexibility and Let's just, we need to make it clear, this is uncharted territory. Yeah. This is a very unique situation. This is, you know, we have a national emergency, a state emergency declarations. So right now our role is what can we, how can we be supportive? How can we provide guidance? How can we get flexibility around the state and federal requirements to make sure that we're putting safety first, that the well-being and health of our students is the top priority, also for our teachers. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of educators, even elderly educators who might be at greater risk. So our advice to the field has been, you know, we, we have your back. We will be supportive. We will create flexibility. If you need to have more excused absences, um, more, like more flexibility around that, then do what's best for your families. And in terms of supplies, because obviously you've seen that we are obviously on a shortage with everyone stockpiling so many of the, the wipes and the, the Purells and, and sanitizers. Three different stores everything. looking for toilet paper today. Exactly. It just doesn't so exist. Paper towels, all of that. Are mm -hmm. our schools equipped with enough supplies? I can't say with certainty since it is going to be district by district. I know typically most classrooms are stocked up with those types of cleaning supplies. More than the average household that they have a sometimes have a closet full of wipes or um, hand sanitizer. That's just a typical school environment. But no, there are no guarantees. I can say even for the Department of Education, we ordered more wipes and sanitizer and, and also are dealing with back order. So it's a challenge for every single agency. Yeah. Well, she is the State Superintendent for Public Instruction, Kathy Hoffman. Thank you very much Thank for joining you. us. Thank you for your time.